happy Mother's Day and welcome to Christ Central. We want to extend our blessings, uh, God's grace, and of course our love to all the mothers in our lives. Whether you are a mother or a grandmother or a mother to be, we pray you are having a blessed Sunday morning. We wish you could be here in person so we could put a flower in your hand or on your lapel, but either way, that's not going to stop us from entering into worship. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. A 
child of God. It is prayer time, and so corporately we enter the throne room together, and we bring our prayers and supplications to the Father. In a digital format like this, it may seem a little impersonal. However, if you want to continue to submit your prayer requests, either in the comments down below or to Sister CJ via our prayer chain, even to the church's email directly, you are more than welcome to do that. A couple requests that you may not yet have heard. Um, Stacy, who is CJ's niece, is going through a handful of scans for her health concerns. I believe um, one of them has already happened and there's a couple more to come. So we're gonna make sure that we pray that those scans reveal exactly what is going on internally with her and of course that God will give her an extra measure of peace as she enters into these tests. A number of us who are staying at home um, are having very little change to our finances. However, those of us who do go to work, our hours have been cut, people have been laid off. So if you want to remember to pray for those who are struggling financially during this, that would be great. And the last obvious thing is for those of us who have children at home that are still studying uh, via the internet and whatnot, and all the stresses that come from a family being cooped up, even a family that loves each other can be intense. So remember them as well. If you have prayer requests, don't forget to let us know and we will put you on the list for next week. Well, let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you and praise you. We lift you up. There really is nothing like being with your people on a Sunday morning. God, I ask that you give an extra measure of grace and peace to all those who are cooped up at home. Help our relationships and our finances, God. I ask that we continue to be Christ-like even in these extreme circumstances. God, I want to lift up Sister Stacy. I ask that the scans reveal exactly what they are supposed to and you will comfort her. Bring peace to her heart as she undergoes one more series of tests and experiments upon her body, God. I ask for full and complete healing. And God, for those of us who are laid off or getting less hours than we have previously gotten, God, I ask that you will give us peace. Help us to find favor in your eyes, God. Make sure that we continue to love each other in the same way that you loved us. Provide for all of our needs, even those unspoken that we do not know of. We thank you for all these things. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm
for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. Well, it is offering time. I spoke with the moderator this morning and he wants to extend his thanks for all your gracious giving this quarter. The church is in a good financial state and that's because of the faithful giving of people just like you. Now, typically we would pass the plate and I would tell you that you can submit your service offering in the connection card. Tough to do digitally, but you can still do that by leaving a comment down below or sending us an email here at the church where we will pray for your service offering. But if you continue to support us financially, we want to say thank you and let you know that we're doing all that we can to be good stewards of the funds God has given us. Sunny side of life. Yeah. If we keep on the 
sunny side of life. Thank you again for being with us this morning. As I've already mentioned, it is Mother's Day. You know, there are a lot of things that mothers do, not only for us as children, but for the family as a whole. They are a comfort to the family. Sometimes they are breadwinners. Sometimes they are gardeners and dishwashers and nose wipers and prayer warriors. But today, we want to focus on the way that a mother speaks, the way that words actually portray positive things in the life of the local family. And to do that, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. Typically, I would say Ephesians 4 verses 22 to 28 or whatnot. Today's a little different. We're actually doing Ephesians 4 starting at verse 25. I'm going to go all the way through Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4. I believe the thought from 4 continues into 5. When we get through and into 5, you can let me know in the comments whether you think that thought continues on the way that I do. So we're going to focus on five different bits of knowledge, wisdom, and verbiage that come out of the mouth of a mother that strengthen the family instead of tearing that family down. The first one is truth. A mother can speak truth into her children, into her spouse, and into her family as a whole and make a huge difference in that family life. We're going to start at verse 25. We'll do a couple of verses and then we'll come back and chat about it. Ephesians 4 25 says this, therefore laying aside falsehood, speak truth each one of you with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give the devil an opportunity. He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor, performing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with one who has need. There's a couple things we learn here. One is that truth is absolutely paramount. Now, if you're anything like me, sometimes truth comes out as criticism or it comes out perhaps even in anger. But here, that's not what we're told. In fact, the thing that flows from truth is this. Go ahead and be angry, but never fall into sin. I love that about mothers, that they can be in a grocery store and the child is having a heart attack because he wants a candy bar, say. And a mother can let the child express anger and yet not return sin or even stop the child when he gets to that point where sin is now an option for he or she. Number two is stop stealing and start laboring. Now, if there's anything that mothers are good at is making sure a child's chores are done. And in fact, let's be honest, making sure that a husband's chores are done. Maybe I'm just talking about me. But that even when someone in the family has fallen into sin, a word of truth can pull them out of that. The example here used is stealing turned into labor. Now it's interesting that labor has a purpose according to verse 28. And that is so that you are able to share with others because of the rewards of your labor. Talk about an amazing message for a mother to pass on to her family. Now, the second type of words we're going to focus on today is uplifting words, as opposed to words that tear down. We find that over in verse 29, just two verses this time. It says this, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. But only such a word that is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. 
You see, not only are the words to be uplifting, to drive us towards righteousness, but the words also are not to be full of anger, clamor, slander, or malice. Now, each of these words means slightly different things. I think the one to really focus on, at least when it comes to a family environment, is probably malice. Words that maybe are true, right? Maybe they do have a need to be spoken, but don't have to be spoken in malice. Can actually be done with kindness. That's something that I greatly admire in the women that I look up to is that they can speak truth, even say hard things to me or my children or their children or their family and do all of it without malice, but do it with love ingrained. That is a massive skill. And I want to thank all the women in my life and the life of the church that do exactly that. Number three, the third type of speech that mothers can bring to a family to lift it up are forgiving words. We find that over in verse 31. Uh, 431 says this, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Be kind hearted and tender to one another. Forgive as Christ has forgiven. This is a massively high calling to all believers. Now we are focusing on mothers today, but all believers can learn this lesson that forgiving is not the way that I would forgive or what I think someone has earned, yet we are to forgive in exactly the way Christ forgave us. When we begin to think about all the things that I have thought, all the things that I have done, all the wickedness that I walk around with in this human body, realizing that God has forgiven all of it. And then we try to apply that to people we come into contact with. Whether they be in our own household or people we meet on the street, that is a difficult pill to swallow. Yet I see it day in and day out. Mothers do it over and over and over. I know my mother has done exactly that with me, especially as a child. So any woman who walks in that spirit of forgiveness, I tip my hat to you and I pray that we as believers can begin to walk down that path. The fourth type of speech that can come out of the mouth of a woman that will completely change their family is that of thankfulness. This is where we cross over into chapter 5. So Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 1, it says this. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us as an offering, a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. A couple things we want to focus on here. Number one is that giving thanks is a fragrant aroma to the Father himself. A fragrant aroma aroma to God, is giving thanks for all that he has done for us. The second thing that I want to focus on here is that this passage compares giving thanks to filthiness, silly talk, coarse jesting, none of which are fitting for a believer. You know, Typically speaking, we kind of take the coarse jesting or the silly speech and we say, well, that is just childish or that's us just having a good time. Ephesians chapter 5 is actually very clear. He puts that, Paul rather, puts that exactly opposite to the giving of thanks. You know, our goal is to be imitators of Christ himself. And I think speech is one of the more difficult things for us to continually 
handle. Yet those who have been successful as mothers, those who are attempting to be Christ-like mothers, they do a very good job of watching their tongue and making sure that they speak truth, making sure that they're not coarsely jesting, making sure they are forgiving, and making sure that they are thankful in all things. The last part of speech that I believe mothers can give to the family to make it even stronger than it was before is words of scripture. Now, I have studied the word of God most of my life, and there are passages that talk about men being spiritual leaders. However, especially when it comes to child rearing, or simply being a head of a household as a husband and wife are, spiritual words must be part of the language at home. If you look at your home and you realize you never, ever broach the subject of what the Word of God says, I want to encourage you to ask the Father, ask the Holy Spirit to indwell your life with the Word of God and put it into your daily speech patterns. We get that out of Colossians chapter 3, just a single verse. Colossians 3.16 says this, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. All wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Then he immediately says psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, wisdom, thankfulness of heart, and admonishment. Meaning. You can speak truth, you can speak thankfulness, you can speak forgiveness, and you can speak the Word of God. Do all of that with admonishment, meaning correction, and still lift the family up and not tear it down. Now, if you haven't yet heard it today, I want to say thank you to all the mothers out there who spent too many years too many of their good, healthy years raising children and are continuing to raise adult children and spouses and be the linchpin that holds families together. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for being God's servant in this and making all of us better because of you. And on top of all of that, God has a blessing for you when you do it. An extra measure of grace that we found over in Ephesians chapter 4. Well, happy Mother's Day. God bless. I pray you have had a good one. We're going to close with one of my favorite worship songs led by Brother Bob.
my soul It is well It is well With my soul My sin But